former boxer executed in broad daylight. A gangland killing at the weigh-in for a European title fight. And a suspected mobster at the heart of world boxing. You can't ignore people in the inner city walking around in fear for years. You can't ignore the drug problem, and you can't ignore that the fact that Daniel Kinnan is one of the guys who's caused all of this. Daniel Kinnan has been publicly named as the head of one of Europe's most brutal drug gangs. How do they make their money? They sell drugs, they sell weapons, and they offer a money laundering facility. So it's a one-stop shop. So why has the alleged cartel boss been allowed to work with some of the world's top boxers? I'm just after getting off the phone with Daniel Kinahan. He's just informed me that the biggest fight in British boxing history has just been agreed. <laughs> Get in there, my boy! How has a company Daniel Kinahan set up become one of the most powerful in the sport? Any time of day, seven days a week, twice on a Sunday, you big dosser. Come on. And why isn't the world of boxing stopping him? Someone has got to look out for the sport. They really need to look at, at this situation very carefully because it's bloody dangerous. will take on Tyson Fury, the Gypsy King. We're situated in a field in the middle of nowhere, as you can see. Um, gypsy style, you know, working it out for the heavyweight championship of the world. There is a new era in heavyweight boxing! Tyson Fury won his first world title in 2015. But within a year, he was out of boxing. Drink, drugs and depression almost cost him his life. I couldn't stop going to the pub. I couldn't stop eating rubbish. I couldn't stop all the things I was doing on my own. Going back before this, I'd always struggled with depression and anxiety most of my life. I didn't think I was ever going to get right again. I thought I was totally finished. In 2017, an overweight Tyson Fury went to train in Spain. The start of a remarkable comeback. Taking it very slow. That's very heavy. But still, I do it to myself. So, I have to do it to myself and get it off by myself. This is where Fury began to piece his life back together. Macklin's Jim Marbella, or MGM. I'm going to prove the world wrong yet again. They didn't give me a prayer last time, and a lot of people are not even giving me a prayer to lose a weight, but I will do it, 100%. At MGM, Tyson Fury began working with the gym's co-founder, Irish expat Daniel Kinahan. The vast majority of people that you speak to will say nothing but good things about him, and for good reason. Um, there's retired boxers that have fallen on incredibly hard times, who have been helped back onto their feet, we're told, by Daniel Kinahan. 
Kinahan had opened the gym in 2012 with Birmingham boxer Matthew Macklin. A boxing website captured one of their first big fight nights in Spain. Daniel Kinahan was there to celebrate Macklin's victory. From the early days, British and Irish boxers signed up to join Kinahan and MGM. Attracted by the best training and facilities. It's almost like they had found something that they'd spent so long looking for. They didn't know existed. This place where they could train in the sun. You would see them as well, their careers improving, their ability improving. Matthew Macklin's name may have been on the door. But I'm sure Daniel can hold his arm in the head there. <laughs> but Daniel Kinahan was running the show as a personal advisor to the fighters. I don't think anyone predicted how big and powerful it would become and that it was the seed for, for what would happen in the years that followed. Kinahan's influence in the sport had taken off. But it wasn't just boxers who were being photographed at his Marbella gym. Other visitors to MGM were attracting attention too. How long have you been investigating the Kinhans? Longer than 10 years anyway. My uh, predecessor was actually investigating them probably for another 10 years before that. They've been on the go a long time. I remember the day exactly standing, looking down for all the world like an underground car park. We set up our cameras, our undercover cameras, and over a course of a number of weeks, we saw some of the biggest criminals we knew to be involved in, in the Irish Mafia going in and out. MGM welcomed criminals, like murderer Freddie Thompson, and armed robbers Kevin Lynch and Gary Finnegan. The suspected criminal connections to Daniel Kinhan have been under investigation. Police in several countries believe he is a key player in a huge crime cartel run by his family. The head of the family is Daniel's father, Christy Kinahan Sr. Police say he founded the cartel. A career gangster, he was first jailed in Ireland in the 1980s. Six years for drug offences. Christopher Kinahan Sr. is a convicted heroin dealer and um, was convicted following an arrest in the late 80s and served a sentence for that. What was your role in that arrest? I arrested him. He was operating a safe flat, which was the nerve centre for the distribution of heroin through most of Dublin city. In 2010, Christy Kinahan was arrested again, this time by Spanish police. Also arrested at the time was Daniel Kinahan and his brother, Christy Jr. It was the start of a criminal investigation that would last for 10 years, called Operation Shovel. Operation Shovel was a case of meet the Kinahans. How do they make their money? They sell drugs, they sell weapons, and they offer a money laundering facility. So it's a one-stop shop. If you want to buy from them, you can buy your, your guns, your drugs, and you can send the money back to be washed. So, perfect if you want to get into that.
Police seized the luxury cars and a series of properties. They claimed they had uncovered a network of front companies designed to clean up the cartel's dirty money. The details were documented by the Spanish police. We had obtained the Spanish investigation files detailing in broad detail all of the Kennehan cartel's operations. They identified Daniel Kennehan as having overall control of the day-to-day -day runnings of the cartel. Their money laundering networks included over 500 million euro worth of properties in northern Brazil, over 110 million worth of properties in Spain. Money was then being sent to Cyprus, to Liechtenstein, to Switzerland, to Panama, all to hide the cartel's cash. The more active a criminal group becomes, the more police forces that are involved, and the more attention it gets. And the Kinnan cartel group, how significant do you think have they become? They certainly feature in, in among the top cartels in, in Europe, yes. By last summer, after a decade-long investigation in Spain, the original allegations of drug trafficking, money laundering, and membership of a criminal organization had all been dropped. This court document says there's not enough evidence to charge the Kinnans, but it adds there are reasonable grounds to believe that they were involved in drugs and weapons trafficking. Europol agrees. It says the Kinhin cartel trades drugs and weapons across Europe and describes them as extremely violent. He may never have been convicted but Daniel Kinhan and his Jim have been repeatedly linked to violence and murder. This is Jamie Moore, a top boxing trainer. In August 2014, he was shot and badly wounded while staying at Daniel Kinhan's Spanish villa. A month later, a Kinhan associate was executed in a bar in Marbella. Der Kavanagh was brutally gunned down just here. He's believed to have been an enforcer with the Kinhan cartel. He was a former boxer and trained at Daniel Kinhan's gym. His killers have never been found. It's thought that Kavanaugh was trying to set up a rival drug business when he was killed. There's an individual who was once close to the Kinahan cartel, and he's seen as someone who was also pocketing money from the drug shipments, uh, stealing money for himself, making his own contacts as well. Despite the bloodshed in Spain, Daniel Kinahan was still welcome in boxing. Two months after the Kavanaugh murder, he walked his business partner, Matthew Macklin, out for a fight on live TV. Also there, the most powerful man in British boxing, promoter Eddie Hearn. Matthew's always going to have you know, bundles of desire and heart, but sometimes your timing's not quite what it was. Eddie Hearn gets fighters the big money deals with Sky Sports. And he's worked with Daniel Kinahan for years. His company told Panorama he has no influence over who boxers choose to have within their management team. And that until the regulators require everyone involved to be licensed, he has to work 
with whoever the fighter asks him to. Boxing is notoriously under-regulated, and there are different rules all over the world. What we have in boxing is a sport that has no umbrella group. There's no overriding governing body. There's nothing in boxing to stop anyone coming along with the right contacts and enough money to make an impression in the sport of boxing. There's nothing to stop that. In 2015, one of Daniel Kenahan's MGM fighters won the world middleweight title. Billy Joe Saunders was congratulated by the alleged crime boss. I've joined up with management team MGM, Daniel, Matthew Macklin's gym. You know, uh, I couldn't do it without them. The fight was brought to TV by the second most powerful man in British boxing, promoter Frank Warren. He gets fighters the big money TV deals with BT Sports. He's also been working with Daniel Kinahan for years. We had a photograph which we published showing Frank Warren enjoying a nice dinner with Daniel Kinahan. But when we asked him about Daniel Kinahan, what did he feel like dealing with someone who has been named as the controller and manager of one of the, the Europe's most uh, efficient organised criminal gangs, he replied with the answer that he was a man of honour and someone he could do business with. Frank Warren also told the newspaper he didn't know of the allegations against Daniel Kinahan. There are those in British boxing who want Daniel Kinahan kicked out. We've spoken to numerous senior figures in the sport, but only one was prepared to go on camera. The 10.30 shuttle from Heathrow touches down in Belfast and Barry McGuigan, world featherweight champion, has come home. Former world champion Barry McGuigan. He is now a boxing manager. Why do you think others are afraid to speak up? There is no doubt that there is an intimidation effect. There's no question about that. You know, you know if we were to believe what we believe, this is, this is a very dangerous man. Because I'm Irish and because I'm from the south of Ireland, I, I know about Daniel Kinahan. And everybody knows about Daniel Kinahan. Even the dogs in the street know about Daniel Kinahan. Because there's an element of fear and, you know, terror around that name. Spain, 2015. And another associate of the Kinahans is running for his life. Chased by a gunman. He was shot dead a few seconds later. Desde un inicio se empiezan a ver vinculaciones con el crimen organizado por parte de la víctima, que lo relacionaban con la presencia en una organización criminal irlandesa bastante potente, los Kinahan. En ese contexto teníamos entre otros el gimnasio MGM y una serie de propiedades que guardaban relación con toda esta estructura criminal. One of the killers has been jailed. This is the first time the lead detective has spoken about the case. Toda esta información o buena parte de esta información eh, apunta a que Daniel Kinahan está relacionado con pues con todo el contexto en el que se produce. Do you think Daniel Kinahan was involved in that murder? Eh, la investigación policial así lo concluye. Ahora bien, seguimos trabajando para poder probarlo, puesto que eh, judicialmente en España es necesario probar muy bien la participación de una persona y en este caso no tenemos suficientes pruebas para poder eh, relacionarlo. The victim, Gary Hutch, is believed to have fallen out with Daniel Kinahan after working for him in Spain. His murder would spark a bloodbath because his uncle, Jerry Hutch, 
runs another Dublin crime gang. Nobody, nobody did that to the Hutches. The Hutches were an army. I think everybody was scared about what was going to happen and, and what was it going to mean for people on the streets, really, and, and that's where the, the battle eventually came back to, to the streets. 2016, the Regency Hotel, Dublin. An MGM boxing weigh-in ahead of a European title fight. gunmen, some disguised as police, roam the hotel looking for one man, Daniel Kinahan. A suspected member of the Kinahan gang was shot dead, but the target, Daniel Kinahan, escaped. Two gunmen were caught on camera as they fled. The photographer initially thought there was one guy with a gun and some woman fleeing. The woman fleeing turned out to be a, a man in drag. It was just one clear image. Click, 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 click. And it was crystal clear. What happened here that day would have devastating consequences in Dublin, and beyond. The word was soon out that the Regency Hotel attack had been planned by the head of the other Dublin gang, Jerry Hutch. There were people working with me that had spent their 30 year service in there, so they knew the background, they knew the history, they knew the families, they knew the connections between the groups, and they were well able to, to uh, sit back and say, like, this isn't over, guys, this, this is only the start of it. Three days after the Regency Hotel attack, retaliation. Jerry Hutch's brother was gunned down. The execution is thought to have been carried out by the Kinahan cartel. Eddie Hutch would have been seen locally as somebody who wasn't involved in crime, taxi driver, a kind old devil that the locals knew very well. So this was a, picking an easy target, but it just, I suppose, was a statement to everybody that the gloves were off, like, you know, that there was going to be no holes barred in relation uh, to this. And that's exactly what happened uh, afterwards. The worst thing about the funerals was you were looking at people carrying their brother or their father's or their uncle's coffin, and you were looking there and saying, one of them may be in the next coffin that I'm, you know, next coffin carried into a church. And that happened. That happened weeks after one person, another person, another person. This is Gareth Hutch carrying his uncle Eddie's coffin. Three months later, he went to see his local councillor in a panic. Gareth came in, he had a problem in his flat. He was very worried about the security. He knew that something, that, that he was a target. We'd arranged a meeting the following day where he could get a transfer, so he could talk to somebody about getting a transfer from the flat he was in to a more secure one. The next day, he was actually on his way to that meeting that we had set up for him, and he was shot outside the, uh, the flats, shot dead. And that was literally less than 24 hours from the time he sat in this office. Two men shot Gareth Hutch as he tried to get into his car. Once again, the Kinahan cartel 
were their main suspects. The north inner city was under siege, under fire, from a drug cartel that was operating outside the state. And what it looked like was with, with impunity. They looked as if they were able to do whatever they wanted. A total of 18 people have been murdered in what's been called the Kinahan Hutch feud. 14 of them were members of the Hutch family or their friends. Two bystanders were also caught in the crossfire. Some say a feud, others say a slaughter or a massacre. Is it a feud? And what do you think it is? I it don't know. No, it's not a feud. This isn't tit for tat. It's just a one-sided massacre, a death sentence on them. And that's, that was the feeling people had. The situation is so serious that cartel's activities have been called an attack on the Irish state. More than 30 people linked to the gang have now been jailed. In the Irish courts, it's been accepted that the Kinahan cartel is involved in drug trafficking and executions. It's been accepted in the courts that Christy Kinahan, senior and all, has stepped back somewhat and that the operations are now being run by his two sons, Christopher Jr. and Daniel Kinahan. It's been accepted that uh, he's directing operations, day-to-day -day operations for the Kinahan cartel. Daniel Kinahan. Daniel Kinahan. I think it's a matter of public record that the, the Kinahan cartel are responsible for quite a number of, of shootings and deaths. Including murder? Including murder. The anger in Ireland was impossible to ignore. In 2017, MGM announced that Daniel Kinahan was stepping back from the gym he founded. And the company was changing its name to MTK Global. There's been a lot of bad publicity. So it's, um, okay, the initials have had to change, the name of the company has had to change, but it's, uh, everyone, everyone knows that that's the same. We're the same people that were behind the MGM. Matthew Macklin then sold MTK to a fake tan entrepreneur who promised to invest cash. She had no previous experience in boxing. But Sandra Vaughan is an old friend of Daniel Kinahan. I want to explain the situation, who Daniel Kinahan is to me. Right, I've known Daniel for 20 years. Sandra Vaughan said that Daniel Kinahan had cut ties with MTK. But her old friend was still involved. A month after the takeover, Daniel Kinahan helped MTK land... Tyson Fury, the former heavyweight champion who was fighting back from drink, drugs, and depression. He was getting ready for another world title bid with the help of his personal advisor, Daniel Kinahan. I think he's what he's generally known or generally accepted is that Daniel Kinahan played a massive part in getting Tyson Fury out of the darkness that he was in and offering him a route back to the sport of boxing. Daniel Kinahan recommended Tyson Fury sign with MTK. 
we've been told by several boxing insiders that he recruited other fighters for his old company too. Barry McGuigan says one of his boxers was poached from right in front of him. The boxer was in the gym, having just finished his training, and he said, I'll, I'll talk to you in a second. And um, finished the conversation that he was having on the phone, he said to me, that was Daniel Kinahan. I said, what? He says, yeah, that was Daniel Kinahan on the phone to me. I said, but you signed a contract. He says, oh, I know, but he was trying to get me uh, to not sign with you, but to sign with him. And I said, but you know, we've agreed terms and we'd already signed. And you know, he says, I know and, and I, I accept that. I understand that. He says, I'm just telling you, that's how keen he was to have me. Um, which, was, which was interesting, yeah. And um, what happened to that boxer in the end? The boxer went to MTK. For Tyson Fury, MTK's biggest star, the return to the top meant one thing. Breaking America. From Manchester, England, here is the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Fury's comeback hinged on a shot at the new heavyweight champion, Deontay Wilder. The winner can walk away and say, I am the man. Back then, Wilder and Fury were playing really well off each other. And both of those guys handled that event um, with a desire to make it as big as it possibly could be. I'd like to say even Deontay Wilder knows to sit down in the presence of greatness. <laughs> he even knows that. And why am I going to beat this ball? The stateside publicity tour was aimed at drumming up interest for the fight and pay-per-view dollars. But Fury's advisor maintained a low profile. People in boxing know that Daniel Kinahan has been an exceptionally influential character in the sport, behind the scenes, for several years. But it was very rarely mentioned in, in public. Come on, any time of day, seven days a week, twice on a Sunday, you big dosser. Come on, bring it on. With Kinahan as advisor, Tyson Fury was stepping into the major league. Live on US broadcasting giant, Showtime. The Gypsy King styling and profiling Tyson Fury. All right, champ. Ha, 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 ha. Still got it. <laughs> you still got it. A film crew working with MTK to promote their fighters captured the champion's comeback. Only the best fights, the top fights, go to pay-per-view. I mean, that's, that's how it's supposed to work. Be in boxing. Oh, and down he goes! Right hand, left hand! And I don't think he's going to get up! I think it's all over! I think it's over! Is he going to get up? And therefore, you start to think, he's actually gone. Your fortune could go from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain in a count of 10. Modern British sport. The decision is a split decision draw. There were other people involved, but you can't deny that Daniel Kinahan played a huge part in it. Could someone like Daniel Kinahan have emerged in the role he has in any other major sport in America? It would be very difficult. Daniel Kinahan, he's been involved in negotiations, you know, of major fights and contracts. That I don't think you would see in, in any other major sport here in the United States. With Daniel Kinahan as his advisor, Tyson Fury secured a five-fight deal with the U.S. broadcaster ESPN. The contract signed in 2019 is worth $100 million. This ESPN situation for him is probably one of the it's one of the biggest things to happen to a British sportsman. 
It's the biggest sports channel out there. It's got, as I just said, it's got the most subscribers. So Tyson's got the, the shop window. All the TV broadcasters in this program told us they have no relationship with Daniel Kinahan or MTK. ESPN, Sky and BT said that they work directly with the boxing promoters. Many international broadcasters have featured MTK fights, including BBC Radio. In 2020, a documentary appeared out of nowhere and was released online. Regency Discover the Truth made no mention of gangland retribution. In this film, Daniel Kinahan was an innocent man set up by the authorities. It cost a lot of money and there's a very good looking actor in it who is playing Daniel Kinahan. this conspiracy theory that Daniel Kinahan is under attack in the Regency Hotel. That the media, that the guards and the government are working together to have him murdered. And it's all in order to affect the result of the general election. It's bizarre beyond belief. The suspected mob boss was coming in from the cold. The new owner of MTK, his old friend Sandra Vaughan, went public about his role in boxing. I will always go to Daniel for advice. If anybody in the boxing world is doing any type of business in boxing and doesn't speak to Daniel or speak to someone that speaks to Daniel, they're telling lies. Leading boxing figures started to talk openly about Daniel Kinahan working with fighters. One knows, I mean, particularly in boxing, that he represents a number of high profile fighters, has represented Tyson Fury for a number of years. He is the, you know, the, the guy leading this Tyson Fury ship. To crack America, Tyson Fury and Daniel Kinahan had teamed up with one of the most powerful men in world boxing. Promoter Bob Arum. He's worked with the greats, including Muhammad Ali. Now he was working with a suspected mobster. I'm not naive about Daniel and his past. 
as long as I understand that dealing in this area of sport, they're honorable, they're smart, and they're not doing anything that's in any way devious or wrong, why wouldn't I deal with them? I think he was trying to launder his name the same way as they launder money from the drugs trade. I think that's exactly what was taking place here. He was laundering his reputation. Simple as that. Simple as that. With Fury as the headline act and Kinahan's help, MTK has become a dominant force in world boxing. It now boasts 12 world champions. <laughs> Welcome to my humble abode. Mr. Fury. Treat me like the king. Big shout out MTK Global. MTK a big Global. shout out Marbella.co.uk. I'm like a f walking billboard sad. <laughs> MTK's become huge. I mean, they've got what must be a couple of hundred fighters on the books, and that's probably the biggest stable I think I've ever heard of in boxing. <laughs> MTK attracts fighters with TV access and low management fees. Most boxing managers take 25% of a fighter's earnings. It's understood MTK typically charges around 15%. I've never witnessed the same sort of growth by any one organization. They want to control the sport. That's as simple as that. Barry McGuigan lost five boxers in a row to MTK's pulling power. Five of my fighters were poached, <laughs> taken away um, by MTK. And I invested, me and my kids, my boys had invested 18 years of our lives in those five fighters that left. You've lost five boxers to to MTK. Mm -hmm. You're annoyed at that, mm -hmm. understandably. Is it not simply a case of sour grapes? No, no, that, that's a fair comment, and uh, people will say that. But put yourself in my position. Um, you invest financially in these kids, you take them on, and then out of the blue, they're unhappy and they're gone. Barry McGuigan recently settled a court case with one fighter who left him to join MTK. Former world champion, Carl Frampton. The boxer made a startling admission in court. He doesn't pay MTK a single penny to manage him. Carl Frampton's statement in court raises a question about MTK's business model. Boxing management companies usually depend on the fees they charge their fighters. But one of their star boxers isn't paying anything at all. In recent months, MTK has started to sign up a host of American talent. They have a ton of fighters, and now they're signing even more fighters, and I don't know where they're gonna put those fighters on TV. It takes millions and millions of dollars to do what MTK have done. How can they sign these fighters? Last week, they signed nine fighters. Where is the money coming from to allow MTK to grow at such a ferocious rate? Like other private companies, there is little information available about MTK's finances. But one possible explanation has now been raised in the US courts. MTK receives funds directly or indirectly from Mr. Kinahan, which are derived from racketeering activities such as drug trafficking and money laundering. In a claim filed in December, one boxing manager has alleged that MTK is using Daniel Kinahan's drug money to buy up talent. 
It's our belief, as laid out in the pleadings, that the Kinahan criminal organization, which is headed by Daniel Kinahan, is also driving and directing uh, MTK, and he's using his uh, criminal empire uh, and financial resource uh, to move into the United States uh, to acquire these fighters. Our view, and as we've alleged in the complaint, is that the criminal proceeds are flowing through from the Canadian organization into MTK and then into the U.S. market for the purpose of, of money laundering. MTK says the lawsuit will be most vigorously challenged. Daniel Kinahan's lawyers say the allegation services are provided cheaply because of criminality is incorrect and perverse. They say he's proud of his record in boxing and ensures that boxers are fairly rewarded for their work. In 2016, Daniel Kinahan moved to Dubai. Two years later, MTK moved its headquarters here too. The Irish police think the Kinahan family are now running their drug cartel from Dubai. Very few sit back and stop. Some diversify into other more legitimate products. But it's difficult once you start that ball rolling to suddenly stop it. Why is that? You've set up an empire and um, it's, it's, you've got to control that empire and to walk away from it leaves a vacuum and Vacuums are dangerous. The net may be closing. Panorama understands the Irish authorities are going to try to get Kinahan cartel members deported from Dubai. You are confident that the days are numbered for the Kinahan organized crime group? Based on the success we have achieved to date in, in uh, identifying people who are members of that crime group, I think it is uh, reasonable to uh, assume that we will uh, uh, achieve our ultimate objective, which is to put the Kinahan Organised Crime Group out of business and to uh, bring the hierarchy of the crime group before the courts. Including Daniel Kinahan? I'm not going to speak about any particular individual, but whoever happens to be in the hierarchy. And it seems the Americans are also investigating the Kinahan cartel. We asked the American Drug Enforcement Agency if they would speak to us about the activities of the Kinahan crime cartel. They told us we are not able to comment on this because it is part of an ongoing investigation. Despite all the allegations of violent crime, Daniel Kinahan remained Tyson Fury's advisor throughout his return to the top. Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury later this year. Hello there. I'm just after getting off the phone with Daniel Kinahan. He just informed me that the biggest fight in British boxing history has just been agreed. <laughs> Get up there, my boy! Kinahan's involvement caused uproar, even raised in the British and Irish parliaments. It was announced Kinahan would no longer negotiate fights for Tyson Fury. MTK said he was stepping away from boxing. But I want to find out if that's true. I want to know the exact connections between Daniel Kinahan and MTK. MTK now has an American chief executive, Bob Yalen. Last summer, he publicly stated that Daniel Kinahan had stepped back from MTK 
and boxing. That's Bobby Allen's house there. At least that's the one we have found. And we searched for it, so I'll go and see him now and see what he has to say. I also want to ask Bob Yalen about the allegation that MTK is a front for Daniel Kinahan's drug money. Well, that was absolutely astonishing. I was speaking to a guest about 15 minutes. I asked him about where the money is coming from to fuel the expansion of MTK in America. And he said to me that a big pot had been developed over the years. I asked him, was that pot from Daniel Kinahan's drug cartel dealings? And he said, no. He told me that Daniel Kinahan is still advising MTK boxers. So I asked him, is Daniel Kinnan still advising Tyson Fury? And he said he didn't know. I said, of course you know. You're the CEO of, of MTK. You do know. He said, no, look, I don't know. If you want to know, ask Tyson Fury. Bottom line, Daniel Kinnan is still involved in boxing. That's the bottom line. We asked Tyson Fury whether he is still being advised by Daniel Kinnan but he didn't respond. Daniel Kinahan's lawyers told us he has no criminal record or convictions. They say the wild allegations about him being a crime boss are false and have no evidential basis whatsoever. He's an independent advisor in boxing and has exited the business of MTK. MTK's solicitors told us it has a perfectly sustainable business and has grown by offering excellent managerial services at a very competitive price. They said Mr. Kinahan has never owned or controlled our client company. He's never provided funding, nor has he been a director, shareholder, officer, employee or consultant. They said it's true Mr. Kinahan does provide personal advice to a number of boxers managed by MTK Global, as well as fighters at other companies. So MTK has confirmed it. Despite all the allegations of violence and crime, Daniel Kinahan is still welcome in boxing. We've spoken to people involved in the game, and they've told us exactly what you've told us, mm -hmm. these people, but they are afraid to go on camera. Does that surprise you? No, doesn't surprise me at all. Why are you going on camera? Well, because I think it's right. I'm not threatened. I'm not, I'm not worried about, you know, these guys threatening me. You know, I've, I've been involved in, you know, terrifying situations my whole life, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Um, but I think someone has got to, got to look out for the sport. They really need to look at, at this situation very carefully because it's bloody dangerous. You can't ignore people in the inner city walking around in fear for years. You can't ignore the drug problem in this country. And you can't ignore that the fact that Daniel Kinnan is one of the guys who's caused all of this. Boxing's reputation is in pieces because the regulators and the sport haven't stopped him. We're very much the Wild West, and we always have been. And when you're near the Wild West, you're going to expect that there are going to be gunslingers coming into town. With the allegations with drugs and money laundering, how is any of that positive, a uh, positive reflection on the sport if he's involved at the highest levels? Yeah. 
whoever wins the big fight later this year, isn't it time that the suspected mob boss was finally knocked out of the sport? I don't begrudge any boxer taking that chance, to be perfectly honest with you. It's a gruelling, brutal sport. Is it the boxer's responsibility to dig a little deeper? That's not for me to say. Is it the sport's responsibility to dig a little deeper? Absolutely. Bum, bum, bum.